Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to our 2024 World Tour series where we are going to look at some really cool model car kits from all over the planet. Well today we are in Japan where we are going to be unboxing a really cool vintage sports car. This is the 1963 Honda S600 by Tamiya. This model car kit came out right at the same time as a split window Corvette and is a really cool miniature sports car that I'm sure you would like to see me unbox. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in here. Now here we have a really cool looking sports car right out of Japan. This is the Tamiya 124 scale Honda S600. And you can see just how amazing this little car looks in white or in red. Love that white with the red interior. It's very reminiscent of the early Corvettes. And keep in mind this is a 1963 car. And what it says is this is part of the sports car series. Highly detailed static display model. S600 form accurately reproduced. Realistic engine detail. Oh nice. Choose open or hard top. Now this box is very long and tall, but also very narrow as you can see. So what we have on this side is the side view profile of the Honda, as well as the front and rear profiles. And that is always some good color reference for when you want to build the model. And on this side of the box, we have the four cylinder dual overhead cam engine being shown, as well as the top of the convertible. And you can see that it is a right-hand drive car as opposed to the North American left-hand drive. And if we just move this box lid across, we get a wonderful little short history right here. It says the S600 was the successor to Honda's maiden production car, the Honda S500, released in 1963. The S600 got 57 horsepower out of a 606 cubic centimeter four-cylinder dual overhead cam engine that could hold its own compared with racing engines and it featured chain-driven rear-wheel drive. Chain-driven rear-wheel drive. Let that thing sink in guys. Exports to Europe followed as the S600 quickly made a name for itself. The lightweight and speedy sports car also proving a success in races both inside and outside of Japan. How many of you owned a Honda S600 in the past? Let me know in the comment section down below because I think that's really cool. Now let's take the lid off our box and see how Tamiya has handled this amazing little model car. All right, so look at all these great parts. I see a clear convertible up top. So that means that the window is set into place. You don't really have to be too worried about it. We also have another rear window, so we'll have to see. Maybe there's a hard top to this as well, much like the early Corvettes had. There's windshield and the headlamps, as well as little marker lights and backup lights and sort of things like that. We've got a chrome parts tree, looking very good. We've got our body over here, another little tiny sports car body. Oh yes, there is a hard top right there. Very nice. Lots of options for this. Got our exhaust setup, which looks really interesting down there. Wheels, of course. Seats, spare tire cover, steering wheel. Some really massive looking sort of rear suspension. Well, chain driven. That's going to be interesting to see. There's our hood there, as well as some brake backing plates, looks like. Dashboard. Engine molded in a metallic color little tiny motor wow that's some cool stuff should uh, resin cast that motor and stick it in every other Japanese car I have with no engine you got tires in a bag tires in a bag and then this great big white parts tree which has our interior interesting floor panel arrangement going on there full frame that's cool almost looks like a little hot rod and model T frame and then we've got door panels. Looks like the top of the dashboard or the cowl, the instrument panel right there. Yeah, neat stuff. Inner fender aprons. Very cool. Then our instruction sheet. And I imagine underneath this... Oh, no, wait. What is this? Tech tips from Tamiya. 
cool. Then we've got our instruction sheet and I've got the decals right there which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. So let's just clear all this out of the way and then we'll take a look at those instructions. Now this kit does have a lot of paper material involved with it. So first off is this Tamiya Tech Tips sheet. So it tells you all the tools you would need in your model build. It also tells you what the tools do. So here is the instruments for cutting off parts. And then we have drills in here as well. And what is this? Using different types of cements and glues. And then if we turn this thing over, that's test fitting, tips on test fitting, tips on removing metal plating, and they show you sandpapering it off. Get that plastic to plastic contact surface. And then down here we have tips on painting, even shaking up the Tamiya rattle cans and the correct distance to spray them from. Now this is in Japanese. There is some English in here as well, and that always helps. But I wonder if it says to whenever you spray paint, you don't want to swing like this, but you want to spray like this, pivoting with your wrist and not, you know, this sort of thing, which I guess is still your wrist, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Because if you do this, let's say you've got the model here. So if you're spray painting like this, you can see where the spray paint's going to get really thick right in here, right? Before you taper off. So way over here, it's going to be very thin and get thick and globby right there. Whereas if you spray like this, you see how you get a nice even coat all the way across? That is uh, my tip on spray painting for you guys. Underneath that tip and tech sheet is the Honda, and this is the background information. So right here it's all written in Japanese, and we've got a photo of the model, as well as a photo of the real car with an airplane over the top of it. And if I just turn this over... Now, of course, I won't be able to read all this, but I'm just going to show you it. So here we have the entire history of the Honda, as well as the Japanese Motor Company. Oh, sorry, the Japanese motor company Honda was founded in 1946. We also have this in German and down here in French. Now with those out of the way, we can actually take a look at the instructions for our Honda. And this is the Honda S600, a 124th sports car series model kit. And then here we have the read before assembly, the paints required, and our tools. Here on the back of the instruction sheet, we have the technical blueprint type drawings of the car, which include the side view, the top view, front and back. It also has locations for all the decals we will be encountering as we go along. And underneath we have a box on how to apply the decals, as well as contact information from Tamiya. And I do believe this might be a paint callout thing, or no, it's a parts code, sorry aftermarket service card okay wait what is this thing when purchasing replacement parts oh okay yeah so if you need replacement parts or whatever this is all the part numbers for them in english and japanese so here we have tech tips on how to assemble the model and here it has different types of cements you can use they want you to use a tamiya cement there's regular and extra thin and then here's how to remove parts from the tree and clean up the edges, glue them all in, and the whole deal. Now what's interesting about Japan is that the hobby world is like the rock stars of, I guess, Japanese culture and entertainment, because a lot of things seem to revolve around model kits, and there are so many different weird things out there, from model car kits, which are pretty much normal, to giant robots, to even model kits of vending machines and animals and whatever else. So Japan model kits are rock stars, whereas it's quite different in Canada and North America, of course. Now let's talk about the assembly steps. So here we have our engine, and you can see it is quite an interesting concept. It's almost, it looks like it's angled over, like a V8, but a four-cylinder version of one side of the cylinder banks. Yeah, it's uh, actually cranked over. I guess this is more or less a motorbike type of engine or something. 
I'm not too sure. I should read that giant history on the back, maybe. But at any rate, we have air cleaners going together here, and then the left and right side of our engine block, plus the intake manifold or something. Or the No, that's a valve cover. Come on, Trev, get with it. And then we've got our oil pan down below, and then motor mount right there. And then coming up to this side, we've got the front of our engine with the generator and the belt, as well as our fan and the exhaust manifold over here. Pretty cool number of decals to apply. Narrow. So I guess there's some decals underneath here. It also shows you the Tamiya paint colors going on. So you're going to have to figure out which colors are what. Oh, here we go. There's a little decal there with the arrow going down here and showing its location. Panel 2 shows the frame being assembled. And here we've got the differential plugging into the back. And then you've got these members that come up and wrap over the top of this with a brace in the back. So this is something that I haven't seen in like an American car or something like that. Almost underslung in a weird way. You've got the drive shaft popping through and goes up on top of the frame. And then we've got this really long transmission being glued onto that motor. Oh, and it doesn't sit like front wheel drive where the valve cover would be in the front. Valve cover is actually to the side, which is really interesting. And then we've got our paint callouts, and there it shows that drive shaft going into the back of the transmission. Panel 3 shows what the rear suspension looks like, and now this whole chain driven rear wheel thing makes a bit of sense. So this is basically like how Mack Trucks did it back in 1925. What you have is your rear differential here with the axle ends coming out and then they would go on to gears which are inside here and the chain is actually in these coverings so it's a very short chain of course going in there and there and then we've got the drum brakes being glued on the back and here's all the inserts and everything for them so basically you're gluing this to the back there's a poly cap in here and then your drum brake so I'm not sure if you're actually supposed to glue this together or yeah, do not cement. So this would be free rolling here, I imagine. Anyway, I'm speculating, so let's carry on. So all this goes together and you can see the shock absorbers are on the back of the chains so that when this hits a, you know, obstacle on the one side, this whole assembly with the chain would, you know, bend upward, I guess, you know, compress on the springs but this side would stay down flat. So that's sort of an interesting way of dealing with independent rear suspension. Panel four shows how our exhaust pipes hook into the car. So this is really interesting because it is a one piece unit, but it's almost got like a dual muffler setup, And then this great big noodle going up in the front and that noodle connects to our exhaust manifold here, just sort of off of the frame, I guess is what's going on. But at any rate, very interesting. Panel 5 shows our front suspension going together. And this has the posable wheels, which is really nice. So here we've got our kingpins and the, those brake drums again, and the little poly caps. We also have this component here attaching to the engine. So I believe that's another motor mount, perhaps. And then we've... Oh, this is tweezers coming in, showing you how to push something together. Not 100% sure what it's showing me. That's okay. Oh, I think it's for putting the tie rod ends on. Maybe that's what's going on. At any rate, we have our lower A arms here and then the posable front suspension. So one pin goes in the top, one pin goes in the bottom, and this pin here on the arm goes into our McPherson's, or sorry, our uh, rack and pinion steering here. And then the shock absorbers are going up underneath. Panel 6 is showing our three-piece radiator being glued together. And then that will go onto the front of our chassis. And the battery glues onto the side of the radiator. And that should clear our steering linkage down below. Panel 7 shows our wheel assembly going together. And here we have a little backing plate sort of thing. As well as our wheel and our tire. You're making up four of these and then you will press them all into those brake drums. In panel 18, we begin to build our interior, and it does have a notice, so we'll read this. 
This instruction manual refers to an ivory white or scarlet red body. Choose one and follow the instructions A or B. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, okay, so A and B is the paint colors, so it wasn't that interesting. I was hoping it would be like, yes, for the red one, you need to not use the, you know, parking brake. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe not the parking brake in particular. Okay, so it does say to make holes back here using a one millimeter drill. And then we're attaching the back of the package shelf up top. The gear stick lever is going in and our parking brake lever is going over here. And then of course painting the interior. Panel nine is showing our interior sidewalls as well as the seat going together. And here we got our colors again. And it also is calling out the window winders and this piece of trim along the bottom, as well as this little bit right here, which I do believe is a latch or something for the roof to kind of hook into. Panel 10 focuses on our dashboard. And again, it is right-hand drive. So if you're building a diorama of Japan, this will all fit in. If you're doing one of America, well, might be a little more difficult. You'd have to reverse this whole thing into left-hand drive, which, could be interesting. So we have our dashboard instrument panels, and these are all decals going in. We also have our radio and glove box. There's the bottom of the panel going up to the top, just like a real car. We have our steering column and our steering wheel, and there's a little Honda decal that goes right in the center of the wheel. Panel 11 begins our body construction, and here it says to remove this center bunch of plastic that's going on there and then put our hood in and tape it down. Temporarily hold with cellophane tape. Now usually you can paint the whole model with the hood in place so that the paint will all look nice. But I kind of like to paint the hood separate. And then we've got our dashboard going in up from the bottom. Panel 12 is showing the underhood fender well detail as well as our firewall. And then on the back we've got our pedals being glued in place. And then there's the lockdown for the hood hinge. And then you would glue this in. So hood hinge first and then the inner fender aprons. And that should make your hood open and lock in nicely. Panel 13 shows our completed interior being assembled into the body. And again, the back goes in here. First locks into a tab in the inside of the body and then swings downward. And you will have to separate the sides of the body just in order to get that to click into place. Once you do that, then you can install this spare tire cover. After the interior is down, panel 14 shows the completed chassis being attached. And there are some little holes on the bottom of the floor panel and little pins that the back of the chassis will link into. And then the front will swing in underneath and click into place. So I do think you actually need to swing the front end first. Then there are some holes in the center here with pins. So put some glue in there, drop that in, and drop the back in. So basically, your body is here and this is clamshelling down like that. Panel 15 is showing our front body assemblies going together. So here we have the door panels. We've got the gas filler cap, side view mirrors, Headlight bezels with little turn signal lamps up underneath here, which is neat. And then our headlamps going in. We also have these driving lights down below and the grill. Really cool stuff. Some decal location here, as well as the rear view mirror. It almost looks like it's on a selfie stick. <laughs> That's interesting. What is going on here? Oh, okay, it's the bottom of the windshield goes into those holes, and then there's a hole in front of it that has this selfie stick kind of uh, rear view mirror. That is interesting. This thing is a stick, goes from the bottom, comes up here, and then locks into the top of the windshield, almost like a split windshield divider, except it's a rear view mirror. Like, why didn't they just make the mirror on a little rod that comes down, like an L shape? Interesting. So, and then after all this part is done, you'd put on your logos, drop in your windshield wipers, and the front bumper and license plate. Panel 16 shows the assembly of the rear of the car, and what we have here are the trunk lid hinges, the door handles, and we have our tail lamps and backup lamps, as well as the license plate light, 
and there should be a license plate going in, but that might be in the next step. Interesting to see these trunk lid handles are external, much like the AMT 1949 Ford kit. Panel 17 is a two-part panel, so we'll just take a look at the top portion of it here. And what we have is the convertible boot down, or yeah, I guess the convertible boot, and that is going up into here. Then we have the Honda license plate. See, I told you it was coming. And that goes into the two holes, as well as the rear bumper going into some body holes underneath the tail lamps. So what is going on all here? Now this is where they're talking about putting on the decal emblems for Honda. It says apply metal transfers. Oh, referring to page two. Okay, this is interesting. So there's some metal transfers in here as well. So let's take a look at the second portion of this page. So here we have the hard top in place. It doesn't show the convertible top that we saw going up, but that's basically a switch between the downed boot and this. So this is the hard top version, so you just paint this up and then install your glass. And what is going on here? Oh, it's just saying inside on the top, you have a concoction of X17 ratio 10 to X21 ratio 3. Oh, so I guess that's 10 parts of X7 and 3 parts of X21 being mixed together to make the interior color. It says down here there's a whole thing about painting. So I can read this, it's short. When the S600 went on sale in 1964, it was available in choice of scarlet, ivory white, and smoke black. From 65, three additional shades were added, show red, harbor blue, and pastel blue. The interior was finished in red or black, depending upon the body color. The high-spec SM600 came in alpine blue metallic or silver sky metallic, both featuring a black interior regardless of body color. This manual gives instructions for scarlet and ivory white bodies. Painting instructions for details are included are indicated, pardon me, during assembly. So really interesting. I didn't know about all those colors. I also didn't know there was an SM model. Here we have the body for our nice little Honda, and you can tell it is quite a tight little two-seater. We have some nice chrome trim running the length of the body and rolling down the sides, which is always nice. The rear panel is oval-shaped, which again is one of those cool features of 60s cars, especially the Japanese ones. Again, really a short wheelbase in this thing. There are holes for the door handles and a sunken in bit to get your hand around them, which is really nice. Check it out there. Look at the front. Almost reminds me of the Volvo P1800 in a little bit of a way. I guess it's just the shape of the grill more than anything, but still very cool looking. Little hood latch right there. Now turning this over. Nothing in the way of mold marks. Oh yes, there are. Right there and right there. Underneath the cowl. But overall, not too bad. A neat little body for sure. Now just as a little fun comparison here. I thought I would compare the body of the Honda to a Triumph from England. As well as our American Corvette down here at the bottom. And you can see quite a bit of a growth difference in here. I think I'll try to line this up a little better. There we go. Yeah, I mean, look at how big these things are. So what's kind of funny is I'm thinking of, remember the old Speed Racer cartoon? Right at the intro of the show when Speed Racer is driving around and he like bumps some car and it goes flying in the embankment and explodes off screen. <laughs> This, because this is so short, it sort of reminds me of that kind of scenario. Now, since I actually mentioned that about Speed Racer, here is the size comparison now against the Honda S600, the Chevy Corvette, and the powerful Mach 5 down below. You can see that the Mach 5 is even longer than the Corvette. So, <laughs> yeah, when Speed Racer does bump that little car, whatever it was, and it goes off the embankment, you could see why, because this thing is actually quite huge, even though it is narrower than the Corvette. 
In next week's video, I'll be taking a look at the Nissan Silvia, and the Silvia was also used as a police car in Japan right around this time period. And here is the comparison to that Honda S600 and the Nissan. And you can see that, comparatively, the Nissan is quite a big car to the Honda. Our next parts tree includes our interior components as well as chassis components. So here we have that neat little frame again, the inner fender wells, door panels, the interior, and other bits and pieces, dashboards and firewalls and whatever this panel is, it's there just for you. Okay, anyway, take a look at the texture on here. That's really cool looking. Also have the instrument panels, which are flat in here so that you can put the gauges in and they'll lie down flat as opposed to being on top of needles and numbers. So there's our interior door panel. Very simplistic. Almost looks like you just paint it with the interior color flat and then attach the door handles, you know, or that they would put the material there, like a big flat piece of leather. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, there's the inner fender aprons and these are nicely detailed. Really cool stuff. Tamiya does make a really good kit overall. On the back side, there are mold marks, but they seem to be all hidden. Make sure, though, that you remove some from the top of the frame in case that becomes an issue for fitting. Our next parts tree includes the racing bucket seats, the really weird exhaust pipe system. We also have our chain drives out the back. Now, I thought this was a dashboard thing, but that's actually the convertible top down. That's the boot. And then here we have the actual hard top, the hood, the drive shaft and differential, as well as wheel backing plates and the brake drums and the wheels themselves, and our spare tire cover and the steering wheel, and me hitting one of the lights off the side. <laughs> My pointer stick. All right, there we go. Look at those nice bucket seats. Detail again is crisp, clean. If you notice, there's very little flash, if any at all. That looks like the cylinder head. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Love it, love it, love it. Very nice, very good, yes. There's the hood. Look at the vents in the back as well. Then we have the cross bracing. And amazingly, there is a mold mark dead center of each of these triangles in here. Mold marks up under the hood, or sorry, under the roof, which will have to be taken care of. But again, really neat looking stuff. I like how the Japanese wheels work. They're might even possibly be some wheel swap out sets from Aoshima or something like that that would replace these if you really wanted to go that route. Here we have our silver gray parts tree which features our Honda engine as well as brake drums again and we've got our floor pedals and the generator and fan belt arrangement as well as our canted over four cylinder and the transmission fan oil pan and cylinder head cover. Again, some really nice detail on these. Clean, crisp, and basically free of flash. Mold marks are down to a minimum underneath here, and wherever the mold marks are would be hidden. These ones are a little bit pronounced here. I think that's the motor mount. That's what it looks like. So just a little bit of a trip over some sandpaper here to get rid of those, and that would make it all nice and flat. Overall, parts are nice looking and should look good under the hood. Next up, we have the glass for our parts tree. Interestingly, there's this big blank area here. So I imagine there was something molded in for maybe one of the other versions of this kit, if there are any other versions of this kit. So here we have the raised top. We also have the window for the hard top. And then we've got our front windshield, we've got our headlights, as well as the marker lamps and whatnot. So let's just take a look at this raised top. You can see it's actually got like the little side windows that you'd see in a 50s Oldsmobile. Or, yeah, that kind of thing. Really looks crisp. You've got rivets going around the edge here where my finger is. So something to detail paint. Unfortunately, there's those four mold marks again, but you would be painting that roof as a canvas 
and the inside even, so you wouldn't really see much of it. Got our headlights again, and always remember that that mesh goes north, south, east, west, and not off at weird angles. Because weird angles, it never looks right. <laughs> These ones actually, I think, the lines go up and down, and then there's like a U-shape. So make sure you look at real headlights like this, and then you'll know which way that uh, loop goes. Either it's going to be up or going down. So be careful as to how it goes, because otherwise you've mounted them in upside down. So since everything in the future of 1963 is chrome, here's our chrome parts tree, and actually there isn't much on this Honda at all. So what we have is the front and rear bumpers, we've got all our hubcaps, headlight bezels, as well as taillight bezels. And, oh no, here's the headlight one. So these are fog lamps. And we also have our grill, windshield wipers, door handles, etc. Side view mirrors, filler door. And I do believe that's our parking brake in chrome. Look at that grill. Tell me if there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks perfect. And it's also open here, which is really nice and adds that extra detail in. I wish AMT would open up all their grills, but somehow they're not doing that. But overall, again, the parts are really nice. you got the Honda logo right in the center of these kind of baby moon hubcaps, I guess they are. Again, really cool stuff and should look excellent on your model. Here we have our tires, and sadly these are nondescript, so they don't have any of the tire manufacturer markings on the side. But if they did, which ones would you like them to be? Pirelli, Dunlop, or Toyo? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, let's just take a look at what we've got. Look at that nice tread on there. That's a nice tread. Perfect for racing in the chicanes and everywhere else, the streets of Tokyo, you know, up around the Suzuka circuit, wherever you want to go. Now, I do believe these are supposed to be 13-inch tires, but it would have been nice if they had even put that kind of lettering on there. But sadly, nothing. But what is cool is these do squish quite a bit. So I like that squishy tires. And here we have our decal sheet. And you can see the wonderful little Honda S600 license plate, as well as all the Honda logos and emblems and our instruments down below. We also have this, which is really cool. These are metal etched scripts for the exterior of the car. And again, they are a really a neat trick to put on your model. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to see the 1963 Honda S600 sports car. Now, if you were to build this model kit, what colors would you paint it in? Let us know down in the comment section below. Say, if you really dig these model kit unboxing videos, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? Don't forget to click those notification bells and turn on all your notifications, especially in your phone, so that every time I upload a new video, you are the first to see it. But if you already are a subscriber and want to turn that up a notch, why not click the join button and become a member? Now, what does that mean to you? What's a member? What's a subscriber? What's the difference? Well, every Friday I release a YouTube video that's an unboxing or a build or a show and tell or whatever it is. And every Friday, if you subscribe, you get a notification on your phone like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a notification. Trevor uploaded an, or Trevor's releasing a new video. So the new video comes out on Friday. So that's if you're a subscriber, right? But if you're a member, you get to see that video the moment I release it. So that could be on Wednesday or Tuesday or Monday, and you won't have to wait till Friday to see it. You can see it right away if you're a member. Membership's only $2 a month, so it's not a big deal. 24 for the whole year. Hey, that's uh, pretty good, isn't it? So basically, that's a good deal. Now, you also get your name in the end, like these nice people did here. These are my members and my Patreons. I also have a Patreon page, but that we'll talk about some other time. So basically, that is that. And if you join me for like a premiere or one of those type of videos where it's got the chat box up in here and you're writing down, you know, comments like, hey, that's cool or whatever. As a member, you get four emojis that I created of Peter. That's our little Monster Hobbies guy. He's like based on Peter Laurie. 
sort of. He's a purple monster with little spiky heads and he's got a nice, or horns, and he's got a nice smile face and like a little, oh, expression and, you know, a tongue out, like, you know, kind of thing. Uh, basically, I designed those and you get access to those as a member. So again, it all works out pretty cool if you if you click that join button down below and become a member today. So at any rate, if you really like watching these videos and want to see another one and don't want to be a subscriber or a member, feel free to click on this video right here to catch out this cool car. And if you want to shop with us online, here's a quick link down here right to the website. That website is www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, we will see you in the next video. Sayonara!